this is Magnar and welcome back to my modding tutorial series for Rome 2 Total War. In this episode we're going to go through the basics of creating a new unit uh, and setting up the files we need to be able to do that. I'm going to spend a few episodes going over unit creation and the different aspects of it um, just to, for those who want to only know a certain part like how to add, add a texture to a a new custom texture to to a unit or something like that, they can go straight to that module. Down below you'll find the link to my Magna Mod Unit Base Pack. This is a pack that I created uh, for my mod when I was working on it um, and now I'm letting you guys use it. Essentially it's got all the it's got a dummy, it's got a placeholder unit there and pretty much all the tables the basic tables required to get a unit to work in the game. So at the very least we can do is just change the appearance a little bit and load it straight up without having to go through and doing all the tables. So I start by opening that up. I have PFM as the default here. Um, let me go in there. We can have a look. So in the, DB, in the database, DB tables, these are the ones you pretty much need for a unit. All are custom named again to avoid uh, any compatibility issues with other mods. So if we go from the top we have CDIR military generator unit qualities tables and this one essentially just says the quality of the unit which determines uh, the priority that the AI gives to building that unit. I had thought for a little bit that it might come into, it might actually have something to do with auto resolve, uh, but through my testing I couldn't prove that. So at the moment it just appears to be for the likelihood of the AI recruiting that unit. Uh, the number you put in here, up to you how you want to calculate it. I've created my own system for calculating it, which is a bit complex to go through. Uh, and it's purely subjective so you can use the vanilla values as a guide and kind of just make up whatever number you want really. The next one is land units tables. Here is where you set all the, well not all, but a large number of the units statistics. You set uh, see accuracy, charge bonus. The charging damage is a combination of the charge bonus plus the speed of the unit at the time plus its mass, all this other kind of stuff that goes in there. Some categories for the units, melee, its spear, what kind of armor it has. These are some of these these are actually linked to other tables, which I've not actually included here. So this will link to here the armor. We'll link to uh, here it's unit armor tables. This is another table. But that's not important for right now. Uh, so we'll look through here. Here this is a description. Um, I haven't actually put that in here because at the, for the basic stuff you can just use a description from another unit. I'll go through the adding unique text to units in another episode. This is the unit key. This is linked to a number of other tables and you'll need to make sure that it is, matches exactly the same for those tables otherwise you will get an error when lo loading the game up. This is the animation that the unit uses. <clears throat> I'll spend a whole episode going through the animation tables and how to create new animations. Um, but for the moment, we'll just use the vanilla animations that are in the game. The man entity uh, determines how much mass it's going to have, uh, how, how fast it can go, how many hit points it has. And that's in another table called battle entities. Again, we're not going to look at that this episode. Uh, that's for more for something else. Here you see the attack, defense, morale, bonus hit points. And then if it's a cavalry unit, it'll have something in the mounts. If it has like war dogs, for instance, you'll have a number in here for how many animals that the unit has. Here is a primary melee weapon. This links to the melee weapons table and this primary missile weapon links to the missile weapons table. Rank depth uh, determines the 
when when it unit is deployed on the battlefield, how many rows back that unit will be deployed. So if you put in 20, then it's going to be a very thin, long line of units. The shield, this links to another table as well. This links to uh, unit shield types table. Uh, another text, which you can link to, you can create custom text later. In another episode, I'll show, I'll show you that. Uh, spacing, most of these are actually all linked to different tables. But we're not going to really look at them for the moment. That's more specialized stuff. We're going to just do a general overview here and copy most of these from vanilla uh, tables just for the most for the moment. Anyway, so there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. Main units. <coughs> this is where you set the unit's default size. A bunch of other stuff as well, like uh, unit caps, um, cost of the unit, upkeep of the unit, how many of that unit can fit on a ship. Um, here you got the number of men in the unit, multiplayer stuff, multiplayer cost, and you also link it. Here's the unit in main units, and you link it to a unit in land units tables. So you can have two units with the same land unit uh, entry, but say you can have one of them which, here you, here, here's where you set your AOR for instance, <clears throat> you can have two of the same unit uh, with the same stats, but you can link them to different AOR uh, areas to be recruited from, for instance. You can say one's recruited from Italy, one's recruited from Spain, for example. Um, there's a few other little bits in here that we can do. Here's another thing. This is a unique index. I'll get onto that when we go into more detail as well. That, that's something which is kind of, kind of important. Uh, then we go on to unit set to unit junction. This is not actually needed for all units, uh, and yeah, I'll go on to that more later. Like a lot of um, skirmisher units uh, don't have anything here, like slingers don't have anything, uh, don't, don't have an entry in this table, and neither do uh, javelin throwers. This table kind of links everything together. So here is linking to main units, so whatever the entry is there comes in here. This links to the text for what the unit name will be. So you can have, and you can even put a faction there. So you can have the same unit uh, with different names depending on which faction builds the unit, for example. And then you have it linked to the variant. The variant we'll get to shortly, but that essentially just is a uh, XML document which uh, sets how the unit looks, what what model weapons, what model armor, and what skin, and all that kind of stuff is set there. And then you've got certain things here. If you want to make a Hobbit mod, you can set this really small to like, I don't know, 0.2, and you're going to have a really short unit there. Um, and you can, huge variation, all that kind of stuff is all done here. And of course, the unit card. Unit cards, you can create your own unit cards, call them whatever you want, and then put that name in there. And that's how that's done. And then you've got custom battle permissions. This is, of as it says, this is for custom battles. <laughs> You say, okay, what do I want this unit to be? Oh, let's get rid of the general tick. We don't need that. We can say whether it's a general, a bunch of other things to do with custom battles, which faction, and the unit, of course. So when we do this unit, we're going to load it in game. We're going to only see it uh, with Rome custom battles when we load it, for example. And then, lastly, for the tables, is military groupings, military permissions. This one determines which faction in the campaign can build this unit. Again, we've just put it to Rome, because why not? It is Rome 2 after all. Okay, so that's all for the database for the basic unit setup. There's many other tables we can add to add certain things, new weapons or special abilities or whatever it is, but that's the basic setup. You can get a game in-game working with these tables alone, and that's the whole point of it. In the text, we have here where we write the name of the unit. So I put in tutorial unit as the name, and we'll get to more text stuff a bit later. UI is for the unit card. The unit card at the moment I haven't actually put in, so it'll be a default unit card when we load it up. And lastly, I click something wrong, but I can just close it like that. Okay. Lastly is the variant meshes. In the variant meshes. There's two folders. Well, not at the moment. At the moment, there's variant mesh definitions. And invariant mesh definitions is where 
all the units variant mesh definitions, which is the XML document I'm telling you about, you can open as text to have a look straight away. Um, that's where these are kept. So all your units will be in variant mesh definitions and each unit will have its own name and will be linked to that database ta uh, DB table here, unit variants to there. There'll be another folder in there called underscore unit variant models, oh, sorry, variant models. And in there will be all unique textures that we decide to add to the game, which we'll go into in a couple of episodes time. So that's the basics for the setup of this uh, basic unit pack. There's a link down below, you can grab it if you want to use it, or you can do your own mod pack similar, or work from your own mod pack. It's not really important. No, I don't really want to save changes. Okay. Now before we get started, some of these episodes are going to be on uh, editing, editing uh, textures that are already in the, from the vanilla game. Um, and to be, able to, to be able to edit them, we have to have them extracted from the packs. So, first thing we're going to do, just to set up our files. You don't have to do this for all the, the models, but I'm going to do it for all the models just so I don't have to screw around with this later. These are the two files where the unit models and unit variant mesh definitions are kept. Models and models underscore two. So we're just going to open those. And we're going to extract just this folder here. We don't need this one. So here, here is that folder I was telling you about, underscore variant models, and you look through here, it's all the different animals, man being one of them, and then it'll be models, all different kind of models for different parts, armor and cloaks, grease, tunics, weapons, all that kind of stuff. I might, I'll just, I'll, I'll extract actually the whole thing. It's not really, if you, if you press for space, you don't have to, you can just extract what you want to use when you want to use it. So I go extract, now right click on the folder I want to extract, being variant meshes, right click and then I go down to extract, extract selected or control X. And then I go to <clears throat> my tutorial folder where I've got my folders already set up from the previous episode of this tutorial. Uh, where is it? Programming, modding, tutorial. Vanilla extracted, extracted files all go in here. Okay, let's extract. There's a few. I think this is the smaller of the two. Okay, done. Now I can close that. And open the other one and do exactly the same thing. Variant meshes. Extract. Extract selected. Find that folder again. Okay, that's more like it. And you just wait for that to be done. So while I wait for that to do, I'll end this episode and get, start preparing for the next one. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Oh, oh, before I do though. Some of the models and such are duplicated, they're in both packs, so you can just overwrite or skip however you like, it doesn't really matter, so I'll skip just so I don't have to copy as much stuff. And that's it for this episode, so thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.